My dear people of God, I welcome us all here this evening for this service of songs, Christian Week, in honor of and on behalf of our daughter, our sister, our parishioner, Peace Maria Anya Mosigwe. We have gathered here this evening to thank God for her life, for the things he was able to achieve with her and through her. We have gathered here this evening to beg God, who has called her back to himself, to grant her a place of refreshment, a place of peace, a place of light. We've gathered here this evening to ask that God will continue to console and comfort the family she left behind. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May we turn to page two of our program as Father Benson leads us with the invitatory. Come, let us adore the King of life. 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 Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us greet him with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. Amen. Oh, the Lord is a great God and a great King above our gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the tops of the mountains are his. Come, let us the King of life. He is the sea, for he has made it, and the dry land which his hand had formed. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, one without end. Amen.
May we please have our seats as we listen to the readings. Our first reading from the book of Ecclesiasticals is found on page four of our program. First reading, a reading from the book of Wisdom, chapter 3, verse 1 to 9. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they, they did appear to die. They are going, they are going, go, going look like a disaster. They are leaving us like annihilation, for they are at peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affli affliction, great will be their blessing. God has put them to test and prove them to be worthy with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, they will shine out and spark run through the stubble, so they will. They shall judge nations, rule over people, and the Lord will be their king forever. They who trust in him will understand the truth, and those who are faithful will live with him in love, for grace and mercy await those who have chosen him. The word of the Lord. My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. My soul is thirsting for God. My soul melts within me. I am my, on my way to the wonderful tent, to the house of God among cries of joy and praise, and an exalt and My 
soul, downcast my soul, why do you sigh within me? Put your hope in God, I shall praise him yet, my Savior, my God. Our second reading will be taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, found on page 7 of our program. A reading from the book of, of Maccabees. Then did Judas Maccabeus take up a collection that amounted to 2,000 drachmas of silver. This he sent to Jer Jerusalem to provide sin offering. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Do not be afraid. I am with you. I am your God. Let nothing terrify you. I will make you strong and help you. I will protect you and save you. Those who are angry with you will know the shame of defeat. Those who fight against you will die and disappear from the earth. I am the Lord your God. I strengthen and say, do not be afraid. I will help you. The Lord says, small and weak as you are, Israel, don't be afraid. I will help you. I, the holy God of Israel, am the one who saves you. I will make you like a threshing board with spikes that are new and sharp. I will make you like you will thresh mountains and destroy them. Hills will crumble into dust. You will toss them in the air. The wind will carry them off and they will be scattered by the storm. Then you'll be happy because I am your God. You will praise me, the holy God of Israel. When people in their need look for water, when their throats are dry with thirst, then I, the Lord, will answer their prayer. I, the God of Israel, will never abandon them. I will make rivers flow among barren hills and springs of water run in the valleys. I will turn the desert into pools of water and the dry land into flowing springs. I will make cedars grow in the deserts, and acacias in my meadows and olive trees. Forests will grow in barren land, forests of pine and juniper and cypress. People will see this and know that I, the Lord, have done it. They will come to understand that Israel's holy God has made this happen. The word of the Lord. We will now take the second hymn, titled Seeking Heaven Alone, found on page six of our program. We shall be taking only the first three verses.
we will now take the responsorial psalm found on page 8 of the program. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of of the Lord, this I see, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and behold. Our third reading will be from the book of Ecclesiastes, found on page 9 of the program, after which we will take a hymn titled, My Times Are in Thy Hand, found on page 9 of the program. For the hymn, we shall take only the first two verses. reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to root up what is planted, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose, 
a time to keep and a time to discard, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. God has made everything suitable for its time. The word of the Lord. Our next reading will be taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, found on page 12 of the program. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died to make sure that you do not grieve about them like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him we can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive unto the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise and then those of us who are still alive will be taking up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. We will now take the hymn titled Blessed Assurance, found on page 11.
May we be on our feet as we take the prayer before the gospel found on page 14 of our program. Immediately after this prayer, the gospel will be proclaimed from Matthew's account of the gospel, chapter 25, verses 1 to 13, found on page 15 of our program. Most loving Lord Jesus Christ, you who have redeemed us by your most precious blood, take pity on the soul of this your servant, peace, Maria Anyamusigwe, open to her the gates of life, and cause her to rejoice with your saints in everlasting glory. Lead her into the lovely places of paradise that are forever green, so that she may live with you in undivided love, never to be separated from you and from those whom you have chosen all. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lambs and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lambs, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flocks of oil with their lambs. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Go out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him in the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know, neither the day, not they are. The Gospel of the Lord. Some years ago, about the very 80s, 1980 or 81, there was this song made popular by the artist Queen. Another one bites the dust. The song goes on to say, another one bites the dust. Another one's gone. Another one's gone. Another one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust. A lot of people have tried to interpret that. It obviously means another one has died. For some, it says another one 
has left the competition or has fallen out of the competition. For others still, it could be interpreted to mean a soldier has fallen. But it speaks about death. You are dust, and unto dust you shall return. Another one bites the dust. I'm not a medical doctor, but I wonder for medical doctors in Nigeria, having seen so many deaths over the course of their work, whether they still feel any pain when another person dies. Is it the case of, well, there goes another. For a country like us, where these poor doctors are virtually helpless, because the tools they need to work are not made available to them, and they work under very difficult conditions. They see people they love die from conditions or ailments they ordinarily will not have died from in other parts of the world. How does this play out on their psyche? For us as priests, I think one of the most difficult jobs is having to preach at funerals or Christian wakes like this. But I think the dirtiest part of our job as priests is having to break the news of death to loved ones. When I heard of Ogechi's death, that's what I call her. Of course, many of you know her as Peace, but over the years, I have preferred to call her Ogechi. I found out that's her native name, and I made it a habit to taunt her with that. Before then, I used to call her Peaceful Peace. For those of you who know or remember the Fuji House of Commotion. So when I heard of Ogechi's death, I called her brother, Mr. Kennedy, and I asked if the news I had heard was true. And he affirmed it. The next question I asked was, has Mama been told? And he said, not yet. I didn't like that. I didn't like that because I became afraid. I said, I hope I wouldn't have to do this dirty job. It is something priests are many times told to do. And there's just no formula or way of going about it. I remember losing my cousin and only son, and everybody felt father was in the best position to break the news to his 90-year-old mother that she had lost her only son. We spent plenty of us, as a family, rehearsing how to go about it. Finally, we decided we'll invite some of our uncles, elderly uncles, so that I wouldn't have to do it alone. We got there, and all we had 
rehearsed seemed to evaporate like smoke. My uncle, who was to start, tried opening his mouth, and he started crying. And my aunt looked at us. She had not seen me for a very long time. So seeing me was very strange. When my uncle opened his mouth and started weeping, she asked, She Benjini, Kiloshe, Shotikuni. Well, she made light the work for us. Because she told us that in the last three days she had seen him in the company of her departed husband. The bond of the mother and the child. So well, I didn't have to do this dirty tax. Ogechi has left us. That we know is something that is bound to heaven to happen. But for some reason, we all believe or think, or most of us think, is something that is very distant. It's something that happens to the other person. I wonder if I ask us here sitting, if anyone has contemplated that he or she may not see the end of this month or the end of this year, how many of us will react? We are Christians. We preach and believe in the resurrection. But do we live our lives as people who believe or who know that death is certain? Many of us may fall into the category of the five bridesmaids Jesus described in our gospel reading taken from Matthew 25, as foolish. They went out to receive the bridegroom, but they were not prepared. The book of wisdom, chapter 3, says the souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. It goes on to say, in the eyes of the unwise. But there's another translation I prefer. That translation says, in the eyes of the foolish, their death, the death of the virtuous, seemed like a disaster, seemed like an annihilation. Now I stumbled on another translation which I kind of love more. The Igbo translation, I went to a funeral in Enugu and it was translated as Nanyandin Zuzu. My understanding of Igbo and Onyen Zuzu is a very foolish person. Maybe in Yoruba we could say Eniti Olokolo. He says, Nanyandin Zuzu, the death of the virtuous seemed like a disaster, seemed like an annihilation. Now, 
I'm not sure anybody here would want to be described as an Onyenzuzu. But let's look at Wisdom chapter 3 and our Gospel, Matthew 25. In the eyes of the foolish, the death of the virtuous seemed like a disaster. And Jesus described five of those bridesmaids as foolish because they were not prepared. If we want to go along this line of thoughts, where would we fall into? Ogechi has passed on, a believer, one who was baptized in Christ Jesus, one who was nourished in the Eucharist, one who professed faith in the promise of Christ, the most stupendous of all promises for all time. I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, even if he dies, will live forever. Is there anyone here today who still thinks that her death is a disaster? Is there anyone here today who thinks that her death is the end of the road? No. Because the preface we use for Christian mass teaches us that for the faithful, life is changed, not ended. And that when this mortal body falls to ruins, a new dwelling is waiting for us in heaven. That is what St. Paul speaks of in his first letter to the Corinthians. He says, if our life had been good only for the here and now, if Christ had not risen from the dead, then we would be the most hopeless and pitiable of people. Because that which is central to our faith, which we profess as Christians, is not prosperity. It is not divine favor. That which is central to our Christian faith is the resurrection. And he goes on to say, that when we die, those who have died in Christ, this body, which is corruptible, will take on incorruptibility. This body, which is weak, will be made strong. This body, which is ugly, will be made beautiful. That is our faith. That is our hope. So how is it that when one of our own dies, we suddenly forget all we have professed? The same St. Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, that when the one we love dies, we are not to mourn like the pagans or people without hope. But those of us who are still alive have no advantage over those who have died in Christ Jesus. Because at the trumpet blast, when Christ comes again from the skies, those who have died in Christ will be the first to be taken up. And those of us who are still alive if found worthy, will also be taken up. So our sister, Peace Marie Ogechi Anyamosigwe, has gone ahead of us in faith. Today, we come not to eulogize her. We come not 
to recount all the wonderful things she has done. But we come to profess our faith that the promise Christ has made will be fulfilled in her life. We stand on the promise of Christ that anyone who eats his body and drinks his blood will have eternal life. She was nourished in his blood. The same Christ who says, I tell you solemnly, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you shall not have life in you. John 6, 53 nourished her on this altar with his body and blood. And because we believe that the one who has promised is faithful, that which he has promised will be fulfilled in her life. Dearly beloved in Christ, we have come knowing that death is that which is certain to happen to all. Because as St. Thomas Aquinas puts it, we exit from Christ and we return to Christ. The exitus reditus. Our homeland is heaven. Our sister has come to the marketplace. She has traded in the marketplace. It is only fitting that she returns home. Who goes to the marketplace to buy or sell and remains in the marketplace? The Yorubas remind us, Aye Lodja, or Runile. This earth is a marketplace, and heaven is our homeland. Every time another one bites the dust. I remember a popular Yoruba song, Ijoba Onru, Lere Oni Bagbo. The kingdom of heaven is the reward for the believer. Our sister has gone out to receive her reward. We as believers can only pray for the repose of her soul. Yes, we pray for the dead. It is Catholic to pray for the dead. It is Christian to pray for the dead. For those who don't believe in praying for the dead, I wonder what they do when they gather are the death of a loved one. Three passages I always speak of that scare me. Leviticus 19, verse 2. You must be holy, for I, your God, am holy. Matthew 5, verse 48. You must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Revelations 21, 27, speaking of the heavenly Jerusalem, it says nothing impure will enter the heavenly Jerusalem, not anyone who has told lies or done abominable things. So I put these three passages together. You must be holy, for I, your God, am holy. You must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Nothing impure will enter the heavenly Jerusalem. And I ask, who then can see God? Who at the point of death, who is that believer 
at the point of death, who is pure, perfect, and holy. If that be the case, how can we speak for certainty that the believer is in heaven? Does that mean no one can see God? Does that mean no one can see heaven? Here we see the justice and the mercy of God lie by side by side. The justice of God is that for anyone to see him, that person must be pure, perfect, and holy. But his mercy is that he doesn't want anyone to be lost. So we see in 1 John chapter 5, verse 16, if you see your brother or sister commit a sin that does not lead on to death, pray for him or her and he or she will leave. But I do not ask you to pray for the one that commits the sin that leads on to death. Verse 17 says, all wrongdoing is sin, but not all sin leads on to death. All wrongdoing is sin, but not all sin leads on to death. So we see people who die free of that sin that leads on to death, but maybe due to human frailty, it's not pure, perfect, and holy, and may be guilty of that sin that does not lead on to death. The Catholic Church makes the distinction between the sins the sin that does not lead on to death, venial sins, and the sin that leads on to death, mortal sin. And so the church doesn't pray for those who die in mortal sin. The church teaches that for those who die free of mortal sin or have not atoned fully for the temporal punishment due for mortal sin forgiven, such persons will undergo purgation. And so, in line with that passage, we, the living, can pray for that brother or sister who has committed that sin which has not led or which does not lead unto death. So the church encourages each one of us to go to confession immediately we fall into mortal sin and to work for our salvation in fear and trembling, free of sin. But if due to human frailty, we die not having attained that perfection, but died free of mortal sin, the living can pray for the dead. If you see your brother or sister commit a sin that does not lead on to death, pray for him or her, and he or she will live. That is why we are here today. That our sister who was a believer, but due to human frailty, may not have attained that perfection, will be shown God's mercy, and through the prayers of the living, the church militants, the part of the communion of saints, that our sister may receive a merciful judgment from the Lord. I had the privilege of seeing Ugechi for the last time on the 31st of December. I had just completed my retreat and I decided to pay a visit to the family to see Mama, and I had the privilege of seeing her that day. And amongst many things she said, she asked me, Father Charles, would we still have a New Year encounter? In the last few years, we take nine days 
in the month of January before the last Friday of the month to have nine days of prayer before the blessed sacrament. And I think it was last year, no, 2021 or so, just after COVID, Ogechi called me and said, Father, this New Year encounter thing is a beautiful thing, but with COVID, many people may not be able to come early, 5 a.m., as we usually do for those nine days. Why don't we do this by streaming it live online? And I said to her, ah, that is more new. I'm not sure I want to do that. And she said, Father, I will work with the Dominican media. I will provide the funds for that. So when she saw me on the 31st, 2022 of December, she asked again, would we have our New Year encounter in the coming year? And I said, yes. Little did I know that she was going to encounter God not before the Blessed Sacrament, but she will see him as the book of Revelation says, face to face. That she will come to the presence of the one who is seated on the throne. She will come to that place where every tear will be wiped away, where there will be no pain, where we will not need the sun or the moon for light. She will come to the presence of the one who was slain for her sake. The one who promised a beatific vision to those who trust in him. She desired the New Year encounter with the Lord. I believe she has gotten that encounter with her God. We pray that if for any reason due to human frailty, she hasn't attained that perfection necessary to see God. That the Lord, the merciful God, who saw her good deeds and how she tried to use that which she knew how to do best to bring Jesus to others, will show her mercy. We pray that the soul of Peace Marie Ogechi Anyamusigwe and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. We will now listen to a special rendition by the choir. When I am down and all my 
my soul so weary when trouble comes and my heart's burden be when I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me you raise me When I'm on your shoulder, you raise me up to more than I can be. There is no life, no life without its hunger, its restless heart beats so imperfectly. But when you come, I am filled with wonder. Sometimes I think I glimpse eternity. You raise me up so I can stand a mountain. You raise me up. Let us pray for those who mourn and suffer, that they may find consolation and comfort in the message of Christ. We pray, O oh Lord. Let us pray for all the faithful departed, that they may reign in the joys of heaven with Christ and his saints. We pray, O oh Lord. Let us pray for God's departed servant, peace, O Gechi, that has so may be delivered from the pains of expiation. We pray, O oh Lord. Let us pray for all our dead relatives, that they may receive into eternal glory. We pray, O oh Lord. Let us pray that all God's people will prepare for the glorious day when Jesus will transform their bodies into copies of his own glorious body in heaven. We pray, O oh Lord. Let us pray for the family, relatives, and friends of peace that they may take comfort and rejoice in the words of Je the words of our Lord. I am the resurrection and the life. We pray, O oh Lord. In the silence of our hearts, we pray for our own private intentions. We pray with Mary, mother of the comforter of the afflicted. Hail Mary. Love, grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary.
O God, creator and redeemer of all the faithful, grant to the souls of your faithful departed servant forgiveness of all their sins. Let our loving entreaties obtain for them the pardon they had always desired through Christ our Lord. Most loving Lord Jesus Christ, you who have redeemed us by your most precious blood. Take pity on the soul of this your servant, peace, Anya Mosigwe. Open to her the gates of life and cause her to rejoice with your saints in everlasting glory. Lead her into the lovely places of paradise that are forever green, so that she may live with you in undivided love, never to be separated from you and from those whom you have chosen. Lord, for those who have faith in you, life does not cease. It merely changes. And when our earthly dwelling falls to ruin, we find an eternal home in heaven all. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Receive, Lord, your servant peace into the place of salvation for which she hoped during her long and beautiful life. Deliver, Lord, your servant as you delivered Enoch and Elijah from the death common to all the world. Deliver, Lord, your servant as you delivered Noah from the flood. Deliver, Lord, your servant as you delivered Abraham out of all of the Chaldeans. Deliver, Lord, your servant as we delivered Isaac from being sacrificed at the hand of his father Abraham. Deliver, Lord, your servant as we delivered Lord from Sodom and from the burning fire. Deliver, Lord, your servant as we delivered Moses from the power of Pharaoh. Deliver, Lord, your servant as you delivered Daniel from the lion's den. Deliver, Lord, your servant as you delivered David from the power of King Saul and from the might of Goliath. Deliver, Lord, your servant as you delivered Peter and Paul from prison. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. I am the resurrection and the life. She who believes in me, even if she dies, shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray. O God, creator and redeemer of all the faithful, hear our supplications and through your infinite love and mercy, graciously grant to the soul of your servant, whom you have called forth out of this world, the remission of all sins by which she may have deserved the severity of divine justice and punishment in the world to come. Be pleased to grant her grace and mercy before your tribunal, and let her attain to everlasting rest and happiness through the infinite merit of Jesus Christ. Grant, O Lord, that as we lament the departure of peace, I am Osigwe, our sister, your servant, out of this life, we may bear in mind that we are most certainly to follow her Give us grace to make ready for that last hour by a devout and holy life. 
and protect us against sudden and unprovided death. Teach us how to watch and pray that when your summons come, we may go forth to meet the bridegroom and enter with him into life everlasting through Christ our Lord. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. May we have our seat. Well, I invite a representative of the family. I wish to recognize the presence of the prior provincial of the order of preachers, Nigeria and Ghana, and the person of Reverend Father Modestus Ungu. Thank you for coming around. I also will want to acknowledge the presence of his socials and the person of Reverend Father Felix Nabuchi, OP. In the same vein, I will quickly acknowledge all the ministers on the altar, uh, Hebdom or celebrants, and the person of Reverend Father Richard Odok, Reverend Father Jude Mary Njoku, Reverend Father Jean Kongolo from Congo, Kinshasa, Reverend Father Benson Irabo. Last but not the least, our Baba in the house. Reverend Father Chukubikim Upechi. Much as I would want to leave the vote of thanks for the representative of the family, I wish to thank all parishioners who have made out time to come, and also our Reverend Sisters and visitors and friends who are here in our midst. On behalf of the entire pastoral team and the lay faithful of St. Dominic's Catholic Church, I once again wish to commiserate with the Anyamosigwe family. Your loss is our loss. Ogechi was our 2018 Youth and Children Harvest Chairperson. And I can confidently say that I missed all. She was proudly a Dominican to the core. She would always tell me, Father Charles, St. Dominic's is my parish. And she lived up to that. Before the last Amma, she said, Father Charles, I want to come and do a Thanksgiving before Amma at St. Dominic's, and I said, before? She said, yes, I choose to do Thanksgiving before Amma and after Amma. And she came to St. Dominic's on that day. I want to invite Barrister Kennedy Anyamusigwe to say some words on behalf of the family. Dear parishioners, the pastoral team, Father Charles, and all the priests here present. Our friends, 
family members, immediate and larger family members, distinguished members here present. We know that this is a period that everyone has taken the time to make it here with us, to be with us, to share in our pain and our loss. We don't take it lightly as a family. On behalf of my mother, who obviously cannot be here today, Chief Dorothy Chinyara Anya Moshigwe, our eldest brother, Emmanuel Nature Anya Moshigwe, Emmanuel Chuka Anya Moshigwe, and all the members of the Anya Moshigwe family, we say a big thank you to you all for being here with us today. We are very grateful, we are very humbled. Um, as God has brought you here safely, may the same God lead you safely. Uh, peace is passing on the challenge for each and every one of us. Uh, taken from the sermon of Brother Charles, that no one knows the hour or the time. May God grant us the necessary graces to be prepared for that last call. Like Brother Charles has said very clearly, it is a market. You go to the market, you buy yourself, but you must go home. May God grant us the grace to go home and may our lamps have oil in them at the end of the day. Thank you very, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. God bless you all. I have been duly informed that the representative of the governor is here. We welcome you to our midst. And we pray that the Lord who has brought you here will lead you back safely. Barista Lufemi Martins, Special Advisor to the Governor on Tourism, thank you for coming. And all who have come to St. Dominic's, thank you for coming. Thank you for all you have been to the family. Thank you for coming, and we pray that the good Lord will continue to bless you. After the final blessing, we'll have the final hymn. So please do leave the pamphlets on your seat. The church wardens will come to pick them up as you step out. Finally, I wish to remind us that the funeral mass comes up here in St. Dominic's. By the grace of God, on Wednesday the 15th by 10 a.m., we will appreciate those who will be able to also come to pray for the repose of her soul. Thank you very much. Let us rise for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, our Christian week is ended. <laughs>